prawns, or shrimp if you're American, once a luxury are now an everyday pleasure. Cheap for us to buy, the human cost of their production is unimaginable. This is the story of globalized slavery and how giant international supermarkets like Walmart, Tesco, Carrefour, Morrisons and Iceland are selling prawns fed by slave labor. The Thai fishing industry is rife with abuse, torture and summary executions. Thailand is the world's largest supplier of prawns. A six-month Guardian investigation has traced the complex food chain from the boat to the supermarket shelf, proving for the first time that the low price of the prawns on your plate depends on slave labor. Late at night, a cargo boat slips into one of Thailand's busiest ports. On board is Vuti, a man who hasn't seen land in over 18 months. Like many Thai ports, this is a hub for human trafficking, where an international network of slave traders often buy and sell migrants onto Thailand's illegal fishing boats. And he isn't safe. The last time he was back on land, he was tricked and sold onto another boat. This time his freedom has been bought by a local charity for just 450 pounds. Terrified and confused, and unaware that he is free, Vuti fears that he's about to be trafficked again. Even free, he's still afraid to show his face on camera. A former monk from Cambodia, he was until today part of the invisible migrant workforce that props up Thailand's multi-billion dollar prawn industry. Each year, thousands of migrants pay brokers large sums of money to smuggle them into Thailand in search of a better life. With his parents struggling to feed six children, Ao Mio left Burma to help provide for his siblings. After his mother died, Jo was abandoned by his father. He lived as a pagoda boy until he left rural Burma as a teenager. ไล่มาเนี่ยแหละชอบจนว่าเนี่ยมาด้วยขอไปตัวอ่าแลมาตีได้ดูเลยตีถ้าแกกินขันยาได้ตูเลยสิเดบ่เนาะอ่าโตซ
Karena barai ludi awal ini, orang lima yang sah kena buaya. Atau orang orang mahu juga. Maru masli itu yang orang mahu masli itu dah tua teribi. Ayo mah kuat tuilai dia masli. Aje mah kulit sedikit ayam cawai. Tim lor dia akan zahir mah. Official Thai figures estimate there are up to 300,000 people working in the Thai fishing industry. The vast majority of these are migrants. Only a fraction are registered. The rest are ghosts. And ghosts are good business for the corrupt brokers, police and Thai officials who prey on them. One high-level broker agreed to talk on condition of anonymity. broker <laughs> ตำรวจกับโบรกเกอร์นี่เป็นคล้ายๆกับว่าถ้าให้ผมมองนะครับเป็นคู่ค้ากันมากกว่าในการที่จะมีเจ้าหน้าที่ติดต่อเป็นคนที่อยู่ชายแดนระหว่างพม่ากับของไทยใช่เรามีครับถ้ามองการที่จะทําเป็นระบบใหญ่คือระบบตรงนี้เนี่ยต้องเข้าใจกันว่าทุกคนได้เงิน The boat captains pay the brokers around 450 pounds for each worker but once on board, the men are forced to work for nothing until they have paid off this debt. These men are chattel slaves, trapped miles out at sea catching the fish that feed Thailand's prawn farming industry. Without them, the industry would collapse. Many of the prawns we eat in the West come from CP Foods prawn farms, and some of their feed contains trash fish. This trash fish is the inedible and infant fish normally thrown away in the West. It's sorted from the rest of the catch and loaded onto large cargo ships, which ferry it back to shore. It is turned into fish meal and becomes part of the fish feed to feed the prawns which CP Foods supply to manufacturers and retailers all over the world. Just about every retailer in the United Kingdom, one way or another, buys material from CP. Thai-owned CP Foods are the largest prawn farmers on the planet. They supply most of the leading supermarkets, including Tesco's, Walmart, Morrison's, Co-op and Iceland, with frozen prawns and ready-made meals. These products come at a low cost for the consumer, but at a high price for those at sea. Sleeping in cramped and filthy conditions, many survive on nothing more than one plate of rice a day. The work is backbreaking and dangerous, hauling nets and sorting fish for up to 22 hours a day. Those that slip up face the wrath of their Thai boat captain. <laughs> With little contact with the outside world, the only escape for many is suicide. Of the dozens of fishermen that the Guardian spoke to, most had witnessed at least one. Slaves who rebel are dealt with brutally and publicly as an example to others. One eyewitness recounted what happened to a fellow fisherman who attacked his boat captain. A lucky few escape. After six months on a boat, Ao Miu took his chances and escaped into the night.
He was lucky. Some slaves never make it back to land and instead are sold from boat to boat for years on end. In a corner of saint Clair Port, we found one Burmese migrant back on land for the first time in almost two years. He was to be a vital link in the supply chain, proving the connection between slaves and the prawns on our plate. We spoke to a crew member whose cargo boat brought the Burmese slave back to shore. <laughs> To find out where the catch was going, we spoke to the boat captain. Then we followed the delivery truck to see which factory it was going to. This was proof that CP are buying fish meal containing trash fish caught by slaves. Our research found that whether they had their own boats or not, factories were buying from cargo boats and trawlers. Some had slaves, some did not. The Guardian investigated several other fish meal factories that also supply CP and found again and again that slaves were part of their supply chain. CP pays a premium to fish meal factories that claim to buy trash fish caught by legal and licensed boats. But they never perform independent spot checks and have no idea what is happening out at sea. Even if they did, the fishing licenses are easily fake. Unaware that he was being filmed, the manager of one cargo boat told the Guardian how it works. <laughs> However, according to Dr. Warapan Prompoj, an international fisheries expert and a government advisor, this problem, she says, is one of the past. Uh, so those who do not have registration, they cannot perform fishing in Thai waters or even in international waters. We don't see that sort of course trip to happen in this situation right now. Things change a lot. The boat manager explained how the illegal catch and unlicensed vessels get away with it so easily. <laughs> The Thai authorities say that combating human trafficking is a top national priority. Yet when the Guardian gave the Thai Navy coordinates for the boats from which Vuti was rescued, they took no immediate action. Thailand is America's second largest seafood supplier. Failure to act now may force the US to downgrade Thailand to the lowest tier of their trafficking in persons index, which could lead to economic sanctions and would see them ranked alongside countries like North Korea and Iran. Maybe that will lead um, the Thai government to realize that uh, it, it's not just forming task forces or passing laws, but in fact enforcement that matters. There is no connectivity between labor inspectors and law enforcement to hold traffickers to account. And actually, the government is all too often complicit with corruption. The Thai authorities may lack the political will to deal with slavery, but much of the responsibility still falls to the retailers and supermarkets who bring the prawns to our plate. Campaigners like Steve Trent 
say they've been warning supermarkets about slavery for years. They can say to suppliers, if you don't make sure, if you don't adhere to our rules and regulations, we will no longer purchase from you. And that in of itself sends out a very powerful message. When asked to comment on our findings of slavery in their supply chain, the top four global retailers, Walmart, Tesco, Carrefour and Costco, and other big name supermarkets including Morrison's, The Cooperative, Aldi and Iceland, all condemned it. Some admitted they were aware that slavery had been reported in the Thai fishing sector and were setting up programs to try to tackle it. All declined to be interviewed. CP Foods Bob Miller was the only representative of the industry prepared to face the cameras. He claims that it is better to work within the system to bring about change rather than walk away completely. It doesn't do us any uh, a great benefit to know that there is trafficking going on, that people are being disadvantaged in this way. And the more we find out, then the more uncomfortable we become. We'd like to solve the problems of Thailand because there's no doubt commercial interests have created much of this problem. And it will be to the commercial aspects of the industry that, that the solutions will have to come. And those solutions, say campaigners, are going to mean that the big name supermarkets have to pay if they want slavery out of the prawn and shrimp supply chain. They are actively supporting slavery by not acting, and conversely, they could be actively working to get rid of it if they really had the desire. The second point is ask your supermarket if they're undertaking independent spot checks that are unannounced so they can find out what the truth is, not just what they're told.